Good afternoon, boys and girls. Um, I'm getting ready to read chapter eight of The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary. This chapter is called A Family Reunion. The next thing Ralph knew, his mother was shaking him by the shoulder. Wake up, she said. Ralph, wake up. Room service has brought us another meal. Room service? Ralph rubbed his eyes, not believing what he had heard. Room service has brought our dinner? Yes, a real feast, a whole blueberry muffin and a chocolate chip cookie, said Ralph's mother. Get up, we are having a family reunion. It all came back to Ralph. Oh, room service, he said, understanding at last. You mean the boy Keith. He is room service to me. Ralph's mother sounded happy and carefree. Ralph sat up already. His aunts and uncles and many squeaky cousins were arriving by the secret paths in the space between the walls. It was a long time since anyone had enough food for a family reunion, and there was rejoicing in the mouse nest for everyone but Ralph. He was thinking of the motorcycle he had lost and the promise he had broken. He had a dull, heavy feeling in the pit of his stomach, and he did not feel like celebrating. <clears throat> Why, there's Ralph, squeaked his Aunt Sissy, who thought she was better than the rest of the family because she lived in the bridal suite where she led her relatives to believe riches of rice fell to the carpet when the bride took off her hat and the groom shook out his coat. The rest of the family knew Aunt Sissy was not as grand as she pretended to be because very few brides and grooms came to this hotel these days. My, how you've grown. Ralph never knew what to say when people told him how he had grown. Well, well, if it isn't Ralph, said Uncle Lester, who had been, who had a nest inside the wall of the housekeeper's office where the maids dropped donut crumbs every morning at 10 o'clock when they had their coffee. <clears throat> What's this I hear about you riding up and down the halls on a motorcycle? Uncle Lester had a way of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. My land, a motorcycle, said old Aunt Dorothy. Isn't that pretty dangerous? Wouldn't mind riding one myself if I were a few years younger, said Uncle Lester. All the little cousins came crowding around Ralph. Show us your motorcycle, they squeaked. We want to ride it. Come on, give us a ride on the on your motorcycle, Ralph, huh, Ralph? Come on, Ralph, please. Ralph knew he was expected to be polite to all his relatives, even the squeaky little cousins. Here are the squeaky little cousins. <laughs> well, embarrassed and ashamed, he looked down at the floor. I sort of lost the motorcycle in a pile of sheets and pillowcases. Lost the motorcycle? Oh, Ralph, cried his mother, genuinely alarmed. Ralph knew what she was thinking. Did this mean the end of room service? Did she have to go back to pilfering crumbs for his brothers and sisters? That's a young mouse for you, said tactless Uncle Lester. Can't take care of anything. If anybody asks me, I think it's a good thing he lost it. And Aunt Dorothy, <clears throat> said Aunt Dorothy. Riding a motorcycle is just plain foolhardy. All the little cousins looked disappointed and sulky. I don't think he ever had a motorcycle, said one. I bet he just made it up, said another, and the rest agreed. Ralph felt terrible. The family reunion swirled on around him. The muffin and cookie were divided. Cousins fought over the blueberries. Uncles, usually overweight uncles, asked for second helpings. Everyone talked at once. The little cousins finished their dinner and went racing around the mouse nest. The aunts and uncles raised their voices to be heard above the racket their children made. Suddenly, there came from the knot hole a noise that drowned out the squeaks and squeals of young mice at play. Shh! Not a mouse moved. They looked at one another, too terrified to speak. Hey, Ralph, come on out, whispered Keith at the entrance to the mouse nest. Ralph's mother gave him a little shove, but no one spoke. 
With heavy feet, Ralph walked to the knot hole, but he did not go out into room 215. What do you want? He asked. <clears throat> you and your family better be quiet in there or my mother will hear you. You know how she is about mice, Keith said. I don't know why people say things are as quiet as mice. You sound like pretty noisy bunch to me. Behind Ralph, his relatives began to tiptoe quietly away to their own homes, leaving his mother to do all the cleaning up. Did you have a nice picnic? Ralph asked, dreading what he must tell the boy. Yes, we saw an old mining town with a real jail with bars on the windows. Keith reached into his pocket and pulled out something curved and hard and white with a rubber band fastened to it with a piece of scotch tape. <clears throat> I brought you a present, he said. Come on out. Puzzled and curious, Ralph squeezed through the knot hole. What is it? He asked. Whatever the object was, he had never seen anything like it. Half a ping pong ball I found down in the game room, said Keith. See, I patted the inside with thistle down and anchored the rubber band to the top with scotch tape. What for? Ralph did not understand. A crash helmet for you, Keith said that <clears throat> a crash helmet for you. Keith set the half ping pong ball on Ralph's head and slipped the rubber band carefully around his whiskers until it rested under his chin. There, that's just right. You need it big so there will be plenty of room for your ears. When you ride a motorcycle, you need a crash helmet. Ralph peered at Keith from under his new crash helmet, which rested lightly on his head. He knew he looked every inch a motorcycle racer, but never in his whole life had he felt so ashamed. He longed to crawl off into his hole and never face Keith again, but his conscience, which until now he did not know he had, would not let him. There was nothing to do but stand there in the fine new crash helmet and confess. Ah, you might as well you might as well know, he told Keith. I lost the motorcycle. Lost the motorcycle? Keith, who had been kneeling, sat back on his heels. But how? I rode it by mistake into a pillowcase in a heap of linen on the floor, and it got dumped into the laundry hamper, confessed Ralph. You rode it into the pillowcase? repeated Keith. But you weren't supposed to ride it in the daytime. You promised. <laughs> I know, agreed Ralph miserably. I didn't exactly mean to write it. But you did, Keith's voice, Keith's voice was accusing. Well, you see, the maid was vacuuming under the bed and I, began Ralph and stopped. Oh, what's the use? I wrote it and I lost it and it's probably gone to the laundry room by now and I'm sorry. The boy and the mouse were silent. Both were thinking about the little motorcycle with its clean lines and pair of shining chromium exhaust pipes. Here's a picture of Ralph talking to Keith about the motorcycle. <clears throat> that motorcycle was my very most favorite of all my cars, said Keith. I saved my allowance and bought it myself. Ralph hung his head in his crash helmet. There was nothing more he could say. It was a terrible thing he had done. I guess I should have known you weren't old enough to be trusted with a motorcycle, said Keith. The boy could not have said anything that would hurt Ralph more. And that's the end of chapter eight. So next time we will read chapter nine and that's called Ralph Takes Command. Ooh, wonder what he's gonna do with that open window. All right, hope you enjoyed the read aloud today. And we will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend.